you should have just, just called me Jack. Jack. Hey everybody, how's it going? We'll be back for another week of the exciting adventures of Scott Campbell and sketching and window painting. <laughs> this time I'm doing a character, Crazy Jack. Uh, the bug-eyed jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> so the sketch is going to go pretty quick. It's a character I'm really familiar with. and. Uh, Sometimes I do them with the triangle eyes, the standard triangle eyes, but this time I wanted to do some big bug eyes and have his tongue sticking out. So we're moving along here with the, my 6B pencil. And uh, I usually use the Palomino Blackwing 602 pencils, but I wanted something uh, even a softer lead this time. And you probably saw the little titles I was first using the sketching mode, which makes it more fluid, and now I'm using the tripod mode for uh, the tight details and stuff. But uh, this is all part of my Halloween series. He's a fun character for sure. This is going to be quite a long video. It's like, uh, I think, 75 minutes long. <laughs> so you might want to watch part of it, take a break, and come back and watch more. Or if you're a hardcore fan, watch it all the way straight through. <laughs> Maybe you're already set up. You've got some snacks and something to sit back and relax and watch the show. So last week, I... Uh, I did some airbrushing, kind of just straight airbrushing, no sketching and stuff, of a zombie. And it was kind of more of a semi-realistic style. I'm not totally happy with how it came out. I mean, it was okay, but I'm really happy with how this guy turned out. And uh, basically what I do when I paint them, I paint them just like if I was going to do, get ready to do the black outline. I do the highlights and the shadows and everything. But in this case, what I do this week is I actually take the airbrush and I take the same color of the shadows I'm using and the same color as the highlights I'm using. And I go in with an airbrush and it kind of just makes it more full and rounder, gives it more form. It takes longer, but uh, it really looks cool. And if you're doing windows, you could use an airbrush if you have some type of power source or extension cord or something you can hook up. This was crazy though. While I was doing this, the wind started to come up and then this big gust of a 60 mile per hour wind just like blew everything away. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> it like knocked down some plants and also a fan I had sitting up too. It was just insane. <laughs> anyway, I'm filling up my paint bucket. I'm getting ready for the day. It's about 7 a.m. Long shadows in the morning. And I wanted to show you my setup here. My paint box is getting quite full because I keep buying mist tints and stuff. And I've got my my brushes there and my uh, compressor, California Air Tools, it's a great compressor. And these are all some of the airbrushing supplies I brought from Portland, the paint, and the, my new airbrush there too. This is kind of cool. I took a can opener I got from the paint store and I cut off, cut off the end and then drilled a hole in one end and put it on a key ring because I hated that. I hated losing... You know, I'd be using like uh, openers or a, a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, and I would lose them. Sometimes I'd use my keys to open the paint and I'd bend the keys and stuff. So this time I got smart and put it on my key ring. Alrighty. I'm going in and and I'll tell you, I actually, <laughs> I actually painted this first, and then I just did the sketch from memory to match with the painting, because uh, 
forgot to do the sketch and I wanted to do the painting so I just started doing it. But it's like I said, it's a, it's a character I'm so familiar with that I just started painting it. But I did the sketch anyway so you could get an idea of how to lay them out. Stem. And I lay out my center line and start doing the big eyeballs. Some people ask me sometimes in the comment section, they're like, what are you using to draw with? And I have to tell them, it's my finger. <laughs> I'm so used to using it. It's a great tool and I've always had one. And I, I never, I never lose track of it. <laughs> When I paint and airbrush the eyes, I, that's why I kind of wanted to do this character because I really wanted to focus in on it. Oh, I didn't like that. I did not like it. <laughs> I wanted them bigger. I wanted them to be more pronounced. I'm always making changes. You know, if you don't like something, just get your roller out and erase it and just redo it. It's pretty much how animators work when they're building an animated sequence or something, or a character. When I lean back like that, it's because I'm trying to check the values and the position of things, you know, I kind of squint my eyes and lean back. It just looks more pronounced from that angle. Yeah, I've used this character a lot, or variations of this character over the years. I've probably done about 600 jack-o'-lanterns. <laughs> Who knows? I usually put two, two appendages or teeth at the top and one at the bottom but like I said yeah this time I wanted to do the do a big tongue yeah it's so forgiving working like this on glass And I was shooting a lot of this with two cameras so you can get like kind of a different perspective. Two different looks. So he's all done. And I didn't do a video of the second coat of white. It's pretty explanatory. Here I'm making up some orange. Because I didn't have enough orange in my little orange tray. So I'm making some more. In this video I show me mixing paint, washing brushes, kind of, I'm trying to, I'm trying to shoot the uh, video closer, closer in. This is with the GoPro and it's really close because you can get really close in with a GoPro and still see a lot of it. So I'm kind of trying to show you like in real time 
pretty much everything that I'm doing. So here's my orange for the jack-o'-lantern character. And I'm trying to... It's kind of challenging because I got the brush in one hand and the GoPro in the other one and I'm trying to follow it and stuff, but I really want to try and make it so you can see it better because in the past some of the videos like well like right there I got kind of in the way but I want you to see what I'm doing close up I want you to see what's going on and these videos are really long but for people that really want to see the step-by-step -step progression of what I'm doing these are good videos to watch but see how close I got in I really pushed that camera right up close to it You can see I'm turning it on end, and then sometimes I use the flat side, and sometimes I use the skinny side, and really manipulate the brush. I should have put the paint down closer to the to the window, but that's all right. You can make a few steps. But see, I really want you to see that. How you push down on it and how you pull the line with a foam brush. Foam brushes are so great. And for anybody new, that's a poly brush, two inch poly brush. Oh, that was Audrey. We use walkie talkies. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll come, come in. in. <laughs> I'll, I'll come, come in, in a minute. minute. Those things are really handy. So you can see you can see where I'm using the GoPro, how close I'm holding it up to it to get those close-up shots. I'm trying to perfect my <laughs> my photography. One thing that's nice this time of year out here, oh this paint dries fast, but I think even in the winter here. It'll, it'll still dry fast because it's really dry here in uh, northern Nevada. There's not much humidity. And when I was doing commercial work, if it was Halloween, I'd have a roller doing this. I might even, I might go around the, uh, the eyes and the, the nose and the mouth and the tongue with the, uh, with the brush, but then the rest I would just whip it out with a four inch roller. Because I'd have a four inch roller with orange in it for sure. Audrey and I stay in touch with walkie talkies. They are great to have. I went in to see if she needs anything before she heads off to get a pedicure. I grab a couple of green apples on the way back. Green apples! What's he gonna do with them? <laughs> You'll see! A little friend across the street. My neighbor Betty, she, uh, I went over there and said, can I, I want to sketch your horse, but one of these days I'm going to go out there and do some sketches of this character. She's a funny horse. I forget her name. She likes green apples, though. Beautiful, so beautiful here. The second coat, I decided to speed it up.
get up and dance while you're watching this video, please do so. <laughs> I'm such a dork. <laughs> Here I'm just mixing up the color for the, the stem and the tongue. I decided to wash that out because it had some orange in it. All pretty straightforward stuff, just doing in the colors. This one, I don't know if I did a second color. Sometimes you can get away with one coat. Yeah, these close-up shots I think are going to be helpful. I kind of messed up on that bottom tooth because I didn't... I got the tongue color the same... The tongue was the same color. I wish I had done the tongue a little bit different color. But it kind of blended into that one. And then when I went to, uh, you know, trap it with black and airbrush and stuff, I didn't get that little, you know, side thing for it if that makes any sense so yeah here I'm just kind of daubing it and stuff because I think I'm just going to do one coat <laughs> a lot of times I just throw my brushes in now I'm going to work on the eyeballs I'm doing a purple color Purple is the opposite of yellow, blue is the opposite of orange, but I was going to make blue, but I thought purple would be more Halloween-y. And I don't think I do two coats on this, because I'm going to be doing some airbrush over it and stuff, and I do blend in some other colors, you'll see, sort of semi-wet on wet. doing a little kind of a highlight where the light hits the, the bottom of the pupil, the iris, the opening when the light's coming from the top. And this is kind of wet on wet. You don't have to do it wet on wet, especially if you're doing with airbrush, but I didn't want to wait for the purple to dry so I, went, I just went for it. Here I'm making a shadow color for the stem and the tongue now. And those are my flats. thin the paint out pretty substantially when I'm doing the highlights and the shadows. Look 
Look at that mist tint, $1.25. <laughs> So underneath you see I pull a line up to it and then on the top line I go past it to show you know the the perspective That's a tongue I do a lot. <laughs> okay, now here I, I'm getting that GoPro really in there. See, there's where I kind of messed up. See, I should have did a line on the side of that, you know, uh, that bottom tooth, but I didn't. And here I just kind of doing a blendery effect. But you know, when I go to paint the airbrush and stuff, I kind of lose that little side part. You'll see, but it still looks cool. Every time I make a video or I do a painting, I learn something new. Try different things and stuff. Later on, I actually do some dry brush with the highlights and shadows on the, on the jack o' lantern. When I was doing commercial work before I retired, I had like 40 or 50 two inch, br two inch foam brushes, poly brushes, and I had a ton of one inch ones too, maybe 10 or 12. And after I used the brush, I just throw it in there and I'd leave them in there. And then after I use all my brushes after a couple jobs, I would wash them all at the same time. But here I have like, I think one inch, or I have one two inch foam brush and I have a couple one inch foam brushes. So I just wash them. Now this I'm just using for the highlight. It's just white, the highlight for the stem. Here what I tried to do is I took the GoPro and just set it right on top of the brush and I'm moving my hand with both the camera and the brush together. It looks pretty cool but it, in a way it looks kind of stiff too. There it gets blocked a little bit. I'm always trying something new to want to get a better shot. <laughs> So far for me, the GoPro has been really good and also my camera phone. I shoot a lot of this with my camera phone. And uh, I also, here I'm going back and taking that color and kind of touching up the white a little. I kind of overextended the white. But anyway, yeah, my camcorder, I use that too, but not as much as my camera phone and the GoPro. It seems to work really good. Right now, this narration is filmed with my uh, my Canon camcorder. So I actually have three cameras that I use. But here I've got the camera kind of wetted with the brush. I'm gonna figure out and make a kind of an arm brace with an attachment so the camera can sit just at the right spot and I can just do it with one hand. But here, yeah, it looks kind of stiff because I'm holding the camera like this. But still, it gives you a really good close-up view of it. I'm just kind of adding to the highlight here. So he's slowly coming along. I think, I think next I work on the dark orange. I didn't do it, but would have been cool with this to do some 
kind of magic stuff, you know, the little magic marks I make. I think that would have been cool because really this guy, he was just a regular jack-o'-lantern and along came some crazy witch and went bing! Put a little life in this guy! I'm crazy jack! <laughs> but this is definitely a fun character. And I posted a little thing on Instagram. It got a lot of views. Got a ton of views. People, people really like the cute animated stuff, I think. Kerplunk. Cleaning up my space a little. All right, I'm gonna get my orange out and get some red in there. And make me some shadow color. I couldn't open it up with one hand while I'm holding the camera, so I gotta put the camera. I pulled it. Kind of held it under my arm. <laughs> but yeah, I just want you guys to really see what I'm up to. washing method. <laughs> this is a bit dark, so I'm going to have to add more orange to it. Oh, big old gloppy wet thing. Looks like I hit the spot. Gotta add a little more water to it though, some spray. A couple more spray. Oh, maybe it's still too dark. I'm going for the yellow. Because, yeah, this stuff dries darker, you know. Good thing I bought a quart of yellow. I got, I didn't get the, the standard, what's it called, Vaspar, Vaspar, is that the name of the paint, I forgot the name already, V-A-S-P-A-R, Vaspar, Vaspar, <laughs> shows how much I know, but yeah, it comes from Lowe's, and uh, I got the next grade up, so it's a little bit better paint, so here I'm, I've got it really locked into the to the camera, like right on the end. Ah, there it goes. <laughs> That's so funny. It just looks creepy like a robot or something. <laughs> and the color, it looks like it's almost the same color as the local color, the orange of the jack-o'-lantern character, but again, it dries darker. I just think it's funny how the brush is like... Here you can almost not see the difference. It's like it got lighter or something. But it all works out in the end. Yeah, the reason these videos take so long is because I'm showing everything in real time and I'm showing you almost everything I'm doing. But you guys can leave a comment if you don't like these or you don't. It seems like the last video I got one comment that was a little bit uh, 
don't want to say negative, but it wasn't encouraging. But uh, one out of 27 comments that were pretty positive. So some of you like this super long format. So I'm going to stick with that for now. I'm just going to make the videos. Besides, I'm retired. I should be able to do whatever I like. <laughs> And this video ended up taking 19 hours to produce. Yeah, when I, I shot the video and I got most of it done, I started at 7 a.m. and I finished around 11.30. And then now I'm doing the narration which takes the narration, setting it up, takes about two hours downloading and stuff, so that's 17, 19, 20, about 21 hours to produce this video. So they do take time. But I really enjoy it, and I know some of you do too. Some of you really appreciate it, based on your comments. I think this is kind of almost like dry brush now. Kind of like just pulling it up and... Because I know I'm going to airbrush over it. Which you will see in a little bit. working on a highlight for the, the local orange color. I don't add water when I'm doing the local colors. I only do it when I'm doing highlights and shadows. Do I add water to thin it down more? Here again I'm using the the GoPro attached to the brush method. I kind of miss out though because the GoPro needed to be turned up more. But you get the idea. And here I think I decide to just hold the GoPro in my, my right hand. And if you can, try to keep the brush organic and just more fluid and not like too tight, too exact. You want some variety in your line and you want some variety in the lines themselves. What kind of lines you use where and, and that all comes with practice. And it might be slow at first, but you'll pick up speed. It just becomes intuitive after a while, if, you know, after doing it so many years. What the heck was that? Maybe I was pointing like, look, blue sky. <laughs> and here I kind of, I also kind of let it dry up a little, do a little dry brush. And a lot of times I'll go over it a couple times. But I think you get the feel for what I'm doing. Sometimes it's confusing editing because I've got two cameras doing the same thing. But in this case, I'm just going in with a GoPro. I just keep looking for little spots to highlight. There's some dry brush there.
Now here, this is my camera phone. That's a nice picture too. But I decided to go in and clean up the white of the eyes and inside the nose and inside the mouth. I'm gonna get, have to get more white to go through the white will go through that more than anything. It's fun doing the Halloween series. I have to think of what I'm going to do next week. Any suggestions on the character for next week? And I'm not sure if I'm going to be airbrushing next week because I just. I don't use the airbrush, or I didn't use the airbrush a lot on Windows, but I did want to show my airbrushing, so it does it does enhance it, but even if you trap this with black now, it's still going to look pretty sharp, because I'm doing a lot of wet on wet and dry brush and some blendery effects. You can get some really cool blends, blendery things if you do wet on wet without an airbrush, but the airbrush is cool as you will see soon enough. my air compressor it's got a really long hose on it which is fortunate for me because my extension cord didn't reach all the way around the house I have to get another extension cord and uh, it's kind of weird I turned on the power before I plugged in the airbrush but because there was air shooting out of the hose before I put the air gun or the airbrush on there but no biggie this is a great little compressor I looked everywhere I looked for about a month what I wanted to get it's got that was a little muffler that goes on it and you can see it you can hear it it's not that loud now I'm closing up the the tank it's got a little thing to let the air out yeah this hose is I think it's a 25 foot hose it's really nice so I'm running over here to get my new airbrush and I was going to add some, I shot a video of cleaning the airbrush, taking all the stuff out, cleaning every single little piece like close up. But this video is 75 minutes, so it's like how much can you take? So I'm going to make a separate video of me cleaning it. So here I'm just hooking the hose up. I should have hooked up the airbrush first, then turned the, the air on. <laughs> but I managed to do it. And it seems like it works pretty good. I don't have to put any tape in there or anything, you know, like plumber's tape or whatever they call it, to keep it from leaking. It seems like it works fine. And then I adjust uh, that red knob I used to adjust the PSI. This will go up to hundred PSI or so but I do it to 30 to 40 PSI for what I'm doing <laughs> later on I'm going to talk about the airbrush it comes with three different tips the one the three and the five I use the three which is the middle one that's the tip and the needle that the airbrush comes with but uh, you can always change it oh, that was weird little glitch there for a second but yeah that cords really long Now I'm going to get me some, I think I start with the dark orange, and I just happen to have a color that matches it, I didn't have to mix colors or anything. Really close. I point to it, see, close. <laughs> I poured in a little two ounce Dixie cup because I'm going to add some uh, reducer. 
I used to be a spokesman for CreateTX Pain. Back in like 2003, they gave me so much pain. I got rid of like maybe four times this pain. But that's the reducer to thin the pain. I got like a, I think that's a quart. It's gonna last me a long time. But yeah, I used to, they used to sponsor ads with me in it and all kinds of stuff. Although I don't consider myself an airbrush artist really. I use the airbrush mainly to highlight and shadow my existing work that already has highlights and shadows but like the stuff I did last week you know that was all pure airbrush pretty much I actually painted a did a, a, a sketch with just a standard brush this is a little jar that comes with it it's a little plastic container and uh, this works good and then so now we're good to go we just hook that up to the airbrush But it's worked really good so far. And I think if you keep them clean, they, this particular type of brush, the VL series, the VL Pache airbrushes, it works good. I've had a couple splatters here and there, but for the most part, it's it works really well. And it's kind of subtle. You see the subtle changes. I'm just trying to blend the existing color a little. and give it a more full, kind of like a roundness to it. I even added a few lines too. I don't know what I'm doing there, if I want to make it... I was trying to make it darker. Sure. Hmm. I'm not sure what I'm doing. <laughs> I obviously tried was changing the color. I didn't like the color or something. Maybe like I said it was too dark or too light or I don't know, does that look darker? like eyelashes almost. <laughs> it's not the effect I wanted because it's a male character. But yeah, it's a combination of how close and how far away you hold the airbrush and how far you press down and pull back. Like pushing down is the air, pulling back is the uh, paint, you know, coming in. And I know for some of you, people, this is old school and you already got the airbrush totally handled more than I could do it. But for anybody new, it's, I had a few subscribers say, oh I have an airbrush but I'm scared to use it. But there's something to that effect or I got an airbrush, I want to try it but I haven't taken the time yet. But yeah, you should just go for it. So here I wanted to say too, I went in and with a darker red and uh, I don't know is this the yellow or is this more red no I think I'm working on the highlight the yellow highlight now but you can tell I went in with a darker red especially along the bottom the shadow on the bottom of the jack-o-lantern took a darker red and kind of added an, another uh, dimension to it. But see there, you can see the roundness. It's starting to develop a roundness around the cheeks and stuff. This is fun to do though. And then near the top, you know, I'm making it a little bit thicker because the light's coming down. Oh, 
I guess he decided to fill in the mouth, clean it up. What's funny though is I go in and I paint inside the mouth and the nose pretty soon. I decide I don't like the white, it's too, it just looks too unnatural and too stark I guess. So I ended up going with a dark, kind of almost like a dark brown inside, but I do, I sort of blend it though, so it looks, it looks pretty cool. And I did airbrush the eyes with some dark purple and white, see? And also the, around the eyes I took a blue and then did some airbrush in the eyes. I didn't show that. I don't know if I lost the footage or where it went or if I didn't recognize it. But And then I did a, some rim lighting under light there. That's like the reflection of whatever the pumpkin's on is coming up at it. So I went in and with the airbrush again and cleaned it up. This is probably the closest view I have of me trimming something so you can really see. But I usually hold I'm holding the camera in one hand, so this time I'm just doing it one-handed. But usually I have my finger there grabbing the paint. But for demonstration purposes, I do it one-handed. So I can hold the camera. And I'm just cleaning up all these little doohickeys everywhere. And get a real close-up view of it. I think this is my 1,000th, 13th video or 14th video. Is that crazy? I've made so many. How many hours is that? It's a lot of hours. But I love doing it. A lot of people have told me they've built their career partly on my videos. That's pretty gratifying. Okay, got the golden fluid. High fl it's a golden high flu, high flow acrylic. And I had a little blue too, a tube of it from a long time ago. It's, uh, it's good for airbrushing too. Really, really good airbrush paint. But I have a lot of that Createx left, so that'll keep me busy for a while. You know, I was thinking I should have, I should have painted this on wood. I would have had a cutout. What's the difference? But I'm going to scrape this off. But it would have been cool to have a cutout on glass. I also might turn these into clip art later too, like take photographs of them and make a clip art book. As you can see how it's really blendery. That first line I did, it kind of beat it up a little. I don't know if you can tell, but it's funny because it's just the black reacting to the, the Createx. So I have to go over it a little here, see? Now his eyes will start coming to life. He does look insane. <laughs> All my characters are me. Did you know that? <laughs> this is kind of weird because on the yellow, you know, on the side it was supposed to be the edge of the opening of the pumpkin and I, I didn't do that black line so it looks kind of weird. It just looks like the bug eyes are sitting on top of the pumpkin. But oh well, it works and you know, people see it and go. But do you see what I mean though? It's like I missed that one black line.
like doing these kind of eyes. That black dried fast, huh? Like in three or four minutes. Hmm, bad case of bad editing. I don't know why I didn't trim that. So I'm going in and adding some little white details. You know, whether it's airbrush or just a standard brush, it doesn't really matter whatever it takes, whatever tools you need to achieve the effect you want to create. That's why I don't like to say, oh, I'm an airbrush artist, because I'm really not, I'm a window painter. And then even beyond that, I like to say I'm an artist, because there's a lot of other art forms I do which you will find out in January because I got some new plans to do some uh, other forms of art. Do a little reflective line. Kind of adds a little, a little to it, gives it a fullness. Like I said before, it's fun doing these rather than commercial work because I can really get into them and spend more time on them because I'm not getting paid so I can do whatever although I did do some stuff like this I did a zombie boy that was really cool with eyeballs like this I don't know if some of you remember that Check my editing next time. Could have saved these five minutes. These lines are so fun to do. Just really fun. I got some really cool brushes now too. I'm doing all these details, but then I go in and repaint the white, so I have to redo the black again, though you'll see in a, in a little bit. I was going to do the inside the mouth yellow, too, but I wanted to go darker to create more contrast. looking on Instagram and seeing the posts of uh, the Halloween stuff. People are doing Halloween already. I really like pulling these lines, trying to make them thick and thinning them, coming to a thin point. Yeah, that's the one where I kind of messed up a little here on this. There's no... And this looks really flat. Because you can see the upper, other teeth have a little 
dimensionality to it. But the bottom one, I, I overlook that. That happens, you know, when you're doing stuff, you don't always, things aren't always per perfect. You can see how the bottom line on the tongue I made, you know, thicker. A lot of times the bottom lines are thicker. These lines I try to be really delicate with. If you make them too thick, it just messes up the effect of the, the roundness and stuff. And there, your eye gets directed to these big, thick, blotchy lines. So some of those lines you need, you want to keep them really thin. Here I do the, the bottom lines first. This one was up high. I was kind of pointed up and doing it, so my hand gets in the way a little bit. But I think you can see what I'm doing. You can see what's happening. Oh, I like that line. Sometimes I go back and beef them up. Hmm, I guess I didn't like the camera position. Doing those little lines to again give it kind of a roundness to to the stems. Oh, that that one I went the wrong direction. Oh no, that's the right direction. <laughs> that looks kind of weird. Sometimes I do that. I don't know what that line was. It was really thin. around. I gotta do the highlight on this other eyeball too. See like this it's it's good to see the overall view of the camera and stuff but sometimes I just get in the way and you can't see what I'm doing. Like if I had had the GoPro on this one, you would have saw the black line. You'll see when I do some outlining later, I do some, I outline this in white, which I never did that before. I did that maybe once or twice when I painted commercially, and then I outlined it with purple too. But I got some really good close-up GoPro shots of me doing that. So, so don't change that dial. There's more. <laughs> bugs me so bad that that other eyeball doesn't have a highlight in it. I want to like go in the go into the camera and put the highlight in there. I was trying to do like a squiggly line, but I think I, I 
go back and beef them up a little. Today we are in Reno and my grandson Samuel showed me a sketchbook. He's really good. He's 15. He's got a sketchbook he's been working on since 2018. It's just filled with all these figurative drawings and he's way better than I was when I was that age. But yeah, he's really prolific. He loves drawing. I like how it looks down here on the bottom. I love that little highlight on the very bottom. It's cool. Uh-oh. Plumber's crack. <laughs> Gotta watch that. Something that happens. Pull those pants up, Mr. Campbell. What are you doing? We can't see it. <laughs> Gotta plan my shots better. You can't see what you're doing. Okay, next. Hey, Momo. Hey there. That's annoying. Hey, guy, come here. Yeah, after I've been working on it for what so many hours, I don't check everything. Hi, Momo. Hey. Yeah. It's my son's dog, so my son has arrived on the premises somewhere. <laughs> Looks pretty cool. But you can see how the airbrush gives it a a roundness to it. Because in real life that's how colors and light blend. It's like my face. It's on my forehead, it's it's a blend. It's really subtle. Things aren't like lines and blocks of of color. So yeah, here I decide to go in and I mixed up a brown, a brown color. You can always change things, you know, if you have the time and the inclination to make things look different. You could have red eyes or... These eyes are actually kind of blue, bluish purpley eyes, but you could add green eyes too. But this color is really good, it contrasts with the, um, definitely with the orange and the yellow. It's all about contrast when you want to make something stand out, and his eyes definitely are the focal point of this creation, this this character. That's what you see. I just wish I'd make his tongue a different color, maybe to stand out more. Even make it a like a you know a, more of a pink color, like a human tongue. But I was trying to kind of match it with the stem and stuff. So. I think I go in with a darker brown and 
try to create more contrast because you can see like the nose opening it's almost the same color as the the dark orange on the side of his eyeball so it's like kind of want to make it more contrasty at least on the top so what I'm doing now and again this is a case of bad editing is um, I'm mixing up the brown there we go yeah I learned a lot in this video I really gotta take the time to look at each segment and make sure there's not um, not any dead time So this is another example of wet on wet. This would be good for a mural too. The quality of this definitely could be a mural, a permanent mural for a, for something. But yeah, I wish I had done it on wood. <laughs> made a cutout. I should do that next week. Get some Luon or something and prime it. Cut it out and just make a cutout. Yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for next week, let me know. So I'm going back in with the other color, the original color now, and kind of blending it in a little. And I think I go in with a lighter yellow on the bottom too and blend that in. Yeah, here we go. Playing around, see what looks good. I like the way that this comes out because it gives it a real dimensionality to it. Like inside, you know, it has there's something going on inside. Sometimes I would take this much time on a commercial job, but. You know, if I was doing like Lipman's or something, I would take that much time because they, they paid me pretty good. But typically, if you're like knocking out Halloween windows, you can't do this type of work on every single job. You could, but it would take you forever. And for most people, they really just your standard highlights and shadows are more than enough because once you trap it in black it looks really cool so here I'm going back in and I'm redoing the lines this paint dries fast in this weather it's so dry here it took me a few months to get acclimated to it from Portland because Portland's so humid some people are like oh you left Portland what are we gonna do you will survive. And someone will step in and take my place. That guy's cool. I really liked how this guy turned out. putting in some details for fun. Wow. It's a long video. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me, sticking with me this long. And leave a comment. I want lots of comments. <laughs> oh, here's where I take the you know, I outlined it with white already, but now I've got the GoPro stuck to my hand and the brush. It looks like a machine's doing it. But this is what I was talking about earlier. 
That's such a cool viewpoint, though. It's like some magic machine that just... But now I'm just doing... I got my brush in my hand now, and I'm just using the camera, kind of holding it next to it again. I'm trying to... Trying to get more shots like this. I don't know if I like the purple, though. What do you guys think? You know, it's kind of... It's just so dark, and... It looks really cool with the white around it, though. And you know what's cool about just doing the white? Is when you take a photograph, take it into Photoshop, you can use the, um, the magic wand thing in Photoshop, if you guys are familiar with that, and you just touch on it, and you can eradicate the background, get rid of it, and then you can make a ping, like a moving thing. Like in the beginning of the video, you'll see this guy moving around, and then the voiceover, too. I do kind of an outtake of the voiceover, I call it. Well, they're not outtakes, they're just samples of doing the voiceover for this guy. Crazy Jack! Later on, I want to get into a little bit of animation. Just a few seconds, it'd be cool if he was just like, I'm Crazy Jack! It'd be so cool. Here he is, came out good, I'm really happy with it. I pretty much like everything about it, just that bottom tooth is my only complaint. But yeah, I love his eyes. His eyes came out great. Hey, you guys, thanks for hanging out and putting up with me for 75 minutes. I'll see you next time. Bye. I'm Jack. Just call me Crazy Jack. I'm Crazy Jack, but you can just call me Jack. <laughs> I'm Crazy Jack, but you can just call me Jack. <laughs> I'm Jack. Looks like we got another double rainbow all the way over. I go out this way so I can see the rest of it. And it's raining here in town Nevada. Isn't that pretty?